Today we're looking at how you can uh, pull your stomach in whilst demonstrating techniques so you don't look like a fat idiot. And we're going to look at um, the rugby pass, how I like to set the rugby pass up. I call it the wrestler pass normally because it looks like a double leg take down on the floor. And then we're going to look at just a standard tripod pass from the half guard. That's it. So, uh, if I go here, for example, okay. So this is my first problem, this knee. And normally if he crosses his feet and he pinches his knees together, now it's a bigger problem. So I have to look at trying to beat this knee shield. We understand? So the first thing we're gonna look at is super easy. I can just try to force it out of the way. Yeah, I can use my hands, I can use my elbow, All right? But when you get to fighting a higher belt, it's not gonna work doing that, okay? So I'm gonna give you an easy pass just straight from this position. And sometimes this pass will also mean that we cannot pass, but we beat this knee shield. So what I need to do is, I need to smash his knee down. Doing this is not really gonna help because his foot is at the end here and I'm pushing it into his foot. We understand? So if I smash his knee down, now his feet are open. So now it's gonna be easier to pass this position, okay? So what we're gonna do is here, I'm gonna put my hand through his leg here. This also stops him from getting an underhook because to get an underhook, he needs to remove this knee, okay? And then sit up. Another problem I see a lot of you doing is you try to maintain this knee shield and get an underhook at the same time. So if you try and underhook me with this knee shield here. Can you see how he cannot close the space? Yeah, we understand that. The idea of this is to shut down the space like a, a tackle or a takedown, right? The idea of the knee shield is to maintain the space, okay? You cannot incorporate them, okay? So if you try to incorporate them, his elbow is super exposed here to get in, hit. You have to decide what you're gonna do. It, for now, all I've taught you is, if you have a knee shield, you can kimura this arm. Or just regard, yeah? Or Pass it through, follow, and get an underhook. Okay, we understand? Yeah, okay. Try to stop doing both. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we pass our arm through in this position. Okay, I'm gonna posture up. I can use my other hand here, that's fine. And then I'm gonna smash his knees down. Okay, we understand? Once I smash his knees down, I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna put it underneath his leg and connect my hands in this position. So my whole goal here is to keep his knees pinched together. Yeah, nice and strong. Now I'm gonna to start to like stand up on my toes and sprawl my legs free. Now I'm gonna to start to lift his legs up and walk him away from me to the other side, okay? So I'm here, hand comes through. I have to kind of maneuver my body over his knee. Yeah, here, you can use your other hand to help if you need it. Up, down, switch your hip, pass my hand through, hands together. Yeah, and see how his legs are already smashed together. If, if something ever tries to keep my leg inside now, it's very difficult for him to cross his feet. Yeah, spawn my leg through, lift, Turn, hip control. If you feel like your partner's escaping, you can just maintain this and keep following him. Like if he tries to hip escape, well, if I can, I can just follow him on my toes. Okay, so again. I leg, this is called a leg weave, like weaving a basket. My hand goes through, blocks his bottom leg. You can cup his leg or you can just punch the floor, whatever you prefer. Okay, up, smash, hands through, hands together. Then I just sprawl my leg away and try to come to this position. We understand it's like a rugby tackle but on the floor. I, I call it the wrestler pass because to me, when I first learned it, it looked like wrestling. But people call it a rugby pass now. Okay, but that's very confusing to me because there's actually a pass that's specific to rugby. 
All right, we understand? With the same partner, everyone's got a partner who's similar size, same partner, start practicing this. Call me if there's a problem. You can get as close as you need to get. Uh, Santiago, just go down for me, please. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna skip the next bit. The next bit I was gonna show you is um, how that pass would beat this knee shield, okay? Uh, and all that would happen is, because I stretch my leg back and I drive my shoulder in here, even if Santiago puts his foot cross, See how I've beaten his knee shield? His knee shield has disappeared now. So I can literally just crawl up, higher up, okay? Now, we don't have enough time to, to go over these things, so I'm gonna um, just skip past that for now and imagine I've taught you that, and then we'll practice that Tuesday. So we're gonna look at a, a more um, realistic way of passing, especially at a higher belt. I need the underhook. He needs an underhook, right? This is the uh, basic level. This is what we both need. So if I win the underhook, I'm more likely I'm going to pass. So I'm going to do a tripod pass, okay? <clears throat> what I do is, I manage to get down, get low, and I get my underhook, okay? And I get his head. <clears throat> First thing I want is I need him flat. So if he's on his side, I can't accept that. I have to, like, walk into him. Now, this is the most, probably the most important detail I'm going to teach you today. Do not, at this level, do this. Okay? Do you remember why we don't do this? You got because you get rolled. Because we get rolled over, right? He blocks my arm, he bridges me over, and I can't move my hand. I cannot do this. We understand? So my hand should be here, and I should be able to base my hand to stop the roll. This hand, if possible, you're not always going to have this option available, but this finger needs to go in his armpit here. Yeah? It's not just doing nothing, it's here and pulling nice and tight here, and I'm basing. So I managed to get my opponent flat. What I'm going to do now is, I'm going to try to control his other arm. Okay, we're going to turn in a circle here. So once I'm here now, I grab his other arm by the tricep here. Okay, I put my head to the other side and I put it against his head. So it's harder for him to turn to face me. Once I'm here, I'm just going to start to stand up in this tripod position. All right, so Basically, my head is supporting me, but this hand also, okay? Once I'm here, I bring my knee up, see how, see how I bring my knee to here? This is where I need my knee. This gives me flexibility on positions, okay? So again, I'm here, I flatten him, okay? I've got head control first, I switch and control his tricep, switch my head, Put it against his head, and I'm on my forehead, not the top of my head, my forehead. Once I'm here, I'm going to stand up like a tripod here. Once I'm here, I bring my knee through, okay? Mainly now, when we get to this scenario, his job is to keep my knee inside his legs. My job is to free my knee. That's why I need to try to control both his arms. If I only have one arm, he can use this hand to stuff my knee back inside. And of course, the other side also is even easier because it's on the same side. We understand? So we're just going to get to this bit. We're not going to pass yet. We're just going to get to a position where we're on our forehead. We have both arms controlled and we bring our knee to his sternum here. We understand? Yeah, we're happy. Do we need to see it again? No? But I have a question. Yeah. Why do you need to switch your head? Your it just stops head. him from turning. Remember, my main objective is to keep him flat. If he starts to turn, he can start to create more frames and attacks. You understand? But my head, by my head going there and pushing against his head, he can't turn. Whenever you want to turn, you need to turn your head, right? So if Santiago stands up for me. Well, just on your knees, Santi. If I'm here and... Who, where's Alex? Alex can explain probably better than me. If I want to throw him and I just stare at him and I try to throw him, this is as far as I can turn. Yeah? We understand? So to throw him where I want him to go, I need to look. So my head needs to turn. Yeah? If you stand up again for me. If I'm doing a Nippon Sienagi, for example, yeah, if I just stare at Santi, this is as far as I can turn, right? I need to look away from him to turn. So the same principle, I stop his head from moving, 
I prevent his body from moving. Yeah, we understand? Yeah, but I'm not using my hands to stop his head, I'm using my head to stop his head. Happy? All right, let's go. Remember, come closer. You need to come closer. So, we have an underhook. Okay, we have a cross face. I make sure my hand is free to pass. I'm going to switch, control his tricep. I move my head and then I drive my head into him. I stand up. I pull my knee out. I'm going to take a step to the side. Put my knee on the floor. Okay? Now, I'm going to slide my knee this direction like a baseball slide or some shit sliding tackle. So I go head up and pass my leg through. Okay? My head comes up to do this. Yeah? Once I'm in this position, this is an okay position, but if this person's a lot bigger than me, I have no base, no really good base behind me. I can try to do this or switch my legs. The best option to do now is to kind of like make him face this direction. So what I do is I control this arm, okay? I lift my hip off the floor and I'm gonna walk into his hips, look. Okay, and I sit on his hip. So now I don't have to fight his legs straight away. Obviously he can hip escape and turn to face me, but now I don't have to fight his hips. If I'm, <coughs> if I'm here, and I just try to turn, sometimes he will hip escape and put his knee inside. And now I've got to pass his knee. Okay? So my, my best option in this position is to walk into his legs so his legs do not face me. Okay? Let's turn this way something. <coughs> Alright, so we'll do it from this position again. So we've managed to get an underhook on our partner. Okay? Head control. But now I need to switch. Switch and I control his tricep. I switch my head across and drive it into him. I'm going to stand up on my head, bring my knee out. If your knee is stuck, so if Santi's knee is stuck, I can try to use my hand or I can try to use my foot to free my knee or I can shake. I take a step to the side, put my knee on the floor. Now what I'm going to do is slide my knee this direction like a baseball slide or a sliding tackle and lift my head up at the same time. Once I get here, my, my hip is pushing down to free my foot. Okay. First thing I do is I put my knee under his shoulder. I put, try to put my knee under his shoulder here. This is to help reinforce this arm. One of his options is he needs to get his elbow to the floor. Okay, but obviously if this is here, even if I make a mistake and he pulls his arm down, he cannot get it to the floor. Now I'm going to start to walk into his hips again. And then I can, now it depends on what you want to do or what you know. Yeah, you can probably get a head control and come higher up or from this point onwards, it's going to depend on your knowledge and what he does. Okay. One more time. So we managed to get our underhook. We get our cross face. Okay, I'm going to control his tricep. I'm going to switch my head, drive it into him. I'm going to start to stand up. Now, if you can't get up straight away, you just do this and then walk forwards. Pull your knee out, step to the side. My knee goes this way, my head goes the opposite direction. Under him here. Now I'm going to start to walk to him. So he faces the opposite direction. We understand? Alright, we're going to do about five minutes and then we'll do some sparring from this position. 